YouTube seems overly saturated with videos on how to read more. They are raking in hundreds of thousands of views, giving off seemingly simple solutions like just listen to audiobooks or just buy a Kindle. These tips are all fair and believe me, I've tried most of them with mixed results. What always irked me about these videos is that most of them offer just seemingly simple solutions but don't grab the problem by its root cause. So I want to share my strategy in thinking behind why and how to actually read more, in my case around one hour every day. First, I will give you a pretty compelling reason on why you should read more. And secondly, I will dive into how we can work in favor of the human psyche to actually create this new habit. So let's get right into it. To give you the best reason why you should read more, let me start off by talking first about compound interest, arguably the greatest force in the universe. Most of you will have heard of this term before, either in school mathematics or in YouTube videos about financial investing. Quickly explained, compound interest is the accumulating return you get on an investment over time. If you put a thousand pounds in your bank today, with a steady return of let's say 5% interest on it per year, it will grow to become about 4,320 pounds in 30 years time. Compound interest can be a very powerful force that works exponentially in your favor, meaning it gains more and more momentum over time the longer you keep on doing what you are doing. It's my belief then that there's also compound interest in real life, and positive habits such as reading are the compound interest of self-improvement. Keeping up with good habits make time your ally, as the longer you keep maintaining that habit, the more interested on it compounds over the years. Famous tech entrepreneur and millionaire Naval Ravikant once said, I probably read one to two hours a day. That puts me in the top 0.0001% of the world. Real people don't read an hour a day. Real people I think read a minute a day or less. Making it an actual habit is the most important thing. Learning one new idea won't make you filthy rich or a genius, but a commitment to lifelong learning will be transformative and shape your mindset, which in order will give you an edge in life. Not only in a business sense, but in your social life, in your relationships and in your thoughts and feelings as well. Books are just one of the many ways to do that, of course, but they have an amazing value for money ratio. Furthermore, each book you read, whether that's fiction or non-fiction, not only teaches you something new, but also opens up different ways of thinking about old ideas. I hope that getting an edge in life is as compelling of an argument for you as it was for me. As speaking from my own experience, I can't stress enough how the commitment to lifelong learning shaped me profoundly in the way who I am and what I am today. And reading is one of the most important tools on this journey. So let's talk about how to go about making reading a consistent habit by using human behavior in our favor. Atomic Habits by James Clear is in my mind not only one of the most important books to read in your life, but also brilliant focus and clear instruction on how to form new habits and make them stick. According to him, any form of action you do, each and every day, even watching this YouTube video, can be divided into four steps. First, we have the cue, which triggers your brain to initiate a certain behavior. In this case, seeing the video in your YouTube feed. It is followed by the craving, which is the motivational force behind every habit. In our example, wanting to know the answer to the video's question. Thirdly, we have your response, meaning the actual habit you perform, as in you watching the video. And finally, at number four, your reward. In this case, finding out how to actually read more and thereby improve your life. These steps build on top of each other. And the reward is the end goal of every habit, the driving force behind it. The cue is about noticing the reward. The craving is about wanting the reward. And the response is about obtaining the reward. We chase rewards because they serve two purposes. They satisfy us and they teach us. Reading fulfills both of these purposes perfectly, as elaborated earlier. It satisfies us by teaching us, thereby getting lifelong gains from it which will compound over the years. So it's a win-win for the brain and becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy at some point. Now it's important to note that as with most positive habits we try to pick up on, we often expect progress to be linear. In reality, the results of our efforts are often delayed. It is not until months or years later that we realize the true value of the previous work we've done. So just keep that in mind with any new habit you want to pick up. In our example, especially reading non-fiction can be a bit tricky for some people in the beginning. So to quote Naval Ravikant once again, when you're reading a book and you're confused, that confusion is similar to the pain you get in the gym when you're working out. But you're building mental muscles instead of physical muscles. To show you that every little step is worth the effort, let's say that the books you read make you just 1% smarter every day, an incremental amount you might think. Compounded over a full year though, you'll be 37 times smarter than when you started off, at least mathematically. It once more goes to show that persistency really pays off with the compound effect. Now the problem that most people have when it comes to forming a new habit relies not in their goal, in this case I want to read more, but the way that they approach their goal, meaning their system. James Clear defines, goals are about the results you want to achieve. Systems are about the process that lead to those results. So instead of thinking about a certain goal, think about an attractive system and the goal will automatically follow as you will feel motivated in the process, no matter what you try to 
achieve. And according to Atomic Habits, the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of your identity. It's one thing to say I'm the type of person who wants this, it's something very different to say I'm the type of person who is this, as improvements are only temporary until they become part of who you are. So instead of saying I want to read more, identify yourself as a person who reads by saying, I am a reader. This small change in expression has a huge impact on your whole motivation and behaviors. You can always ask yourself, what would a person who reads a lot do in this situation? So our goal is to take on the identity of a reader, but that's just the first step. The more important part is our system. So we need a system that constantly motivates us on our journey to become a reader. And to do this, we need a system that lets the four steps of every habit I mentioned earlier, the cue, the craving, the response and the reward play out in our favor and make them as attractive as possible for us. So with every new habit you want to take on, ask yourself these four questions. How can I make the cue as obvious as possible? How can I make the craving as attractive as possible? How can I make my response as easy as possible? And how can I make my reward as satisfying as possible? James Clear calls them the four laws of behavior change. And these lay the theoretical groundwork for our endeavor. Many people think that they lack motivation when what they really lack is a clarity in their approach. So having a clear system in place should make reaching our goal much easier. So let's go through these four laws of behavior change and talk about how to implement them into your life practically. How can I make the cue as obvious as possible? Cues are tricky, as almost all decisions you make on a daily basis are based on almost invisible cues and triggers your body and mind subconsciously pick up on. Your morning routine might go something like this. You wake up, you have a shower, you brush your teeth and you make a cup of tea. Each habit follows another completely naturally, as your brain has trained itself to follow a simple if this then that equation. It automatically spots the cues of each successive action. James Clear calls this habit stacking. And we now have to find the perfect place and time for our new habit to fit into this automatic routine by making the cue as obvious and actionable to us as possible. We need to use a so-called implementation intention, which goes something like this. When situation X arises, I'll perform response Y. If you're like me and easily doze off when reading in the evening, try to read first thing in the morning. So I for myself made the implementation intention of, as soon as I wake up, I will read for 30 minutes. Studies have shown that people who make a specific plan for when and where they will perform a certain action are much more likely to follow through with them. If we tell ourselves, I'm going to eat healthier or I'm going to meditate more, but we never say when and where these habits are concretely going to happen, we leave it up to chance and hope that we will just remember to do them or feel motivated at the right time. And being specific about what you want and how you will achieve it helps you to say no to things that will derail progress or distract your attention and thereby pull you off course. So this is a crucial first step on our journey of becoming a reader. So we now created a cue that's obvious to our brain. Next time when you wake up, there's a signal that your brain can pick up on, which will let you remember the action you vow to follow up with. Make sure that the habits you want to implement into your daily routine make most sense where and when you insert them. Consider when they are most likely to be successful and have the least amount of friction. Don't ask yourself to do a habit when you're likely to be occupied with something else, like to meditate for five minutes when the kids have to get ready for school. For me, I found that reading worked best right after waking up or at around 8 p.m. in the evening, when most of the day's work is done, but I'm not too tired yet to immediately fall asleep. How can I make the craving as attractive as possible? Our environment is the invisible hand that shapes human behavior. The more obviously available a product or service is, the more likely you are to try it. There's a reason why the products you see on eye level in a supermarket, for example, are usually pricier brands than the products you can find at the top or at the bottom of the shelf. Humans naturally want to go the way of least resistance and supermarkets can make a pretty penny by placing the most expensive products right in front of your eyes. So in order to follow up on our cue with a response, we need to design our environment in a way that the craving is as attractive to us as possible. It's easy not to practice the guitar when it's tucked away in the closet, for example. It's easy not to read a book first thing in the morning when the bookshelf is in the living room downstairs. So a first step in our example would be to bring the book as close to our place of action as possible. In my case, I always have my iPad right next to my bed when I wake up. I literally just have to stretch out my hand to the side and I can start reading. There's almost no excuse not to. You can even take it a step further and associate objects around your flat solely with your new habit. The author speaks of a friend who uses his computer only for writing, his tablet only for reading and his phone only for social media and texting. Every habit has a home and the brain knows that. Furthermore, you can not only design your environment in favor of the habit you want to implement, but also in a way that it diminishes bad behavior. For example, if you get easily distracted while reading, keep your phone in silent mode or choose a time where distractions are less likely to occur, like first thing in the morning. You can see why this is working out so well for me. 
Your environment not only means your physical surroundings, but also the social circle you are in. We as humans tend to imitate the habits of the people close to us, or the ones we are looking up to. So you could try to leverage this effect, for example, by attending a book club where you are surrounded only by other readers, or create a social media group with friends you know who have the same hobby as you. In a similar vein, we also try to copy the behavior of successful people, because we desire success for ourselves. For me, reading really picked up when I watched a lot of videos from other way more successful content creators and entrepreneurs, elaborating about their stringent reading habit. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, for example, managed to read 50 books per year while leading multi-billion dollar companies. I feel like, to become successful myself, I need to copy this amongst other behaviors and that was a huge driving force behind it. How can I make my response as easy as possible? As with our environment, we can also shape our response to have as little friction and resistance as possible. Luckily, with reading, there are a bunch of ways to go about it. The two minute rule. A life philosophy that I often follow is, the best is the enemy of the good. Meaning that something you've done or achieved, although not being 100% perfect, is oftentimes better than waiting for perfection and not reacting at all. So instead of instantly going from zero minutes of reading a day to 30, start by just doing two minutes. Because if you want to master a habit, the key is to start with repetition, not perfection. And doing something for just two minutes has such little friction that there's absolutely no excuse for you not to do it. And after a few days or weeks of just reading two minutes every day, you might think, I'm doing this anyway, so let me just finish this chapter and the magic starts to happen. Use technology. I will admit, <laughs> I personally don't like physical books. I tend to read about 5 to 10 books simultaneously, and having to keep them all by my side at all times, especially when traveling for work, would be almost impossible. So I made the switch a few years ago to only read ebooks and purchase physical editions just for photography books or when using them for this channel. This means that on my iPad I have a library of about 500 books wherever I am and can access them in any lighting situation. There's no reason for me not to read when my iPad is close by as the process of picking up is absolutely effortless. Same could be said for audiobooks. They ease the friction when you want to read in situations where it's not always easy to do so, like when you're in a crowded public transport or when it's even dangerous to pull out a book like when you're driving a car. They are a great substitute for these situations and in my mind are especially well suited for listening to works of fiction on the go. I personally prefer written books for non-fiction as I tend to highlight a lot and that's harder to do when you're listening to them. In case you want to try though, there is an app called Air, which lets you save down audio snippets from podcasts and audiobooks and send them to other apps like Notion. I have linked it in the description below. Only read what you want to read. Now you might think that's kind of obvious, but hear me out. To quote Naval Ravikant once again, it almost doesn't matter what you read. Eventually you will read enough that it will dramatically improve your life. The best ones to read are the ones you're excited about reading all the time. From my experience, he's absolutely right. If you're completely new to reading, start with what has the lowest barrier of entry to you and read the stuff until you enjoy reading in and of itself. Don't feel forced to start with the classics, as they can be a bit clunky in the beginning. Pick up something nice and easy, something you're likely to naturally drift towards to anyway. And if you're stuck on a book, don't feel forced to finish it. Put it aside for a later time and go with something new. Remember, the most important part is to stick with what you're doing. So read what you love until you love to read. That's another Novel Ravikant quote. How can I make my reward as satisfying as possible? Finally, here's what we came for. That sweet payoff for the pain we had to go through. This payoff then is twofold. You have the immediate reward and the long-term reward of your actions. These immediate reinforcements help maintain motivation in the short term while you're waiting for the long-term gains to arrive. As explained earlier, the long-term rewards are the result of the compounding effect of your actions that will change your mindset forever going forward. As I've said, your progress won't be linear or immediately noticeable, but it's worth looking back once in a while to see where you came from. I promise you that the results will be astonishing over time. Reading, for example, made me more knowledgeable, more eloquent, more decisive and calmer in my personality, as I could anticipate more eventualities of life and knew how other people handled them before me. This video is focused very much on reading, but the same principles apply for every habit you want to pick up, whether that's working out, meditating or eating healthier. But in addition to the long-term reward, we also want to make the short-term reward as satisfying to us as possible. And there are two ways to go about it, habit stacking and habit tracking. Both have the aim to make the progress more appealing to our psyche by using traits deeply ingrained with our brain. Habit stacking is an extension of the concept I explained earlier, when we primed ourselves for a certain cue. If you remember, we used the implementation intention, when situation X arises, I will perform action Y, to prime ourselves for a certain sequence of actions. This concept can be extended to, once I have performed action Y, I will reward myself with outcome Z. I personally, for example, reward my 30 minutes of reading in the morning with a nice breakfast right after. So my habit stacking goes something like this. As soon as I wake up, I will read for 30 minutes and reward myself with breakfast right after. 
Knowing the immediate outcome of your actions beforehand gives your brain a carrot on a stick it can chase after. It makes carrying out the action much more satisfying. As mentioned before, choose a logical sequence of events that cause as little friction as possible to your everyday life. Habit tracking, on the other hand, is satisfying because it makes our progress more visible, providing clear evidence of what we've achieved so far. It leverages multiple laws of behavior change at once. It simultaneously makes our behavior obvious, attractive and satisfying. Here I love to use technology again to aid me on my journey. As an avid gamer, I love to gamify real life as well. Use numbers and statistics to level up and see the progress in real time. On a smaller scale, for example, I love how a Kindle or the Apple Books app tells you exactly how much percent of a book you've read, how far you've come. Physical books sort of do the same thing, of course, but I just love this easy and quick overview of my progress. For the bigger picture, then, I use a reading tracker like Goodreads, for example, to keep track of the books that I've read so far this year. You can set a reading goal and the website tells you exactly if you are behind your schedule or even ahead of it. Few things are as satisfying to me as logging a freshly finished book and seeing the stats rising. Storygraph is a similar website to Goodreads and might be worth a look for you as well. It's more focused on the content of your books and has a pretty good recommendation algorithm. If you want to take it even further and reach Jedi level of habit tracking, I use a website called Readwise to extract all the highlights of the books I've read and forward it to my second brain, an app called Notion. Essentially creating a library of all my knowledge subsumed in one place. I want to do a whole video about this workflow in the future, so subscribe to this channel to don't miss out on it. What we've discussed today can have a tremendously positive effect on your life. The compound effect is a powerful force that the longer you feed into it, the stronger it becomes. And reading is one of the very best and most ancient ways to go about it. We live in a time where the library of Alexandria is essentially at our fingertips. So hopefully I've created a hunger in you to go out there and grab for this edge in life. Let me quickly summarize again how to go about it. First, formulate a concrete goal. Identify yourself with your new habit. Don't say, I want to read more. Say, I am a reader. Prime your mind for what this means. Then create a system that respects the four laws of behavior change and use them in your favor. Make the cue as obvious as possible by implementing your new habit into a logical system sequence of events into your everyday life. Make the craving as attractive as possible by designing your environment around your new habit. Make the response as easy as possible by easing friction. Apply the two-minute rule, make your habit easily accessible by using ebooks for example, and concentrate on the books that work for you. Make the reward as satisfying as possible by using habit stacking and let your new habit be followed by a logical reward right after. Gamify your habit by using habit trackers or technology to visualize your progress. If you now have an urge to start reading right away, a really good place to start would be by actually reading Atomic Habits, the book I've been referencing today. It goes into way more detail than I could have done and gives great examples to make this whole concept easier to understand and implement. But whatever new habit you want to pick up on, remember that getting just 1% better every day can have a tremendous effect on you just one year later. In my mind, it's very well worth the effort. So let me know down in the comments below what new habit you want to pick up on and how reading has changed your life. Thank you and see you next time. Ciao.